Looking at the creed, I started a series on it. Last week we looked at the first section of that creed. And it said, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. This week we're on to the next one. It says, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. So, I started last week and I mentioned something about how our beliefs shape how we live. It's pretty much the best statement I can give you because it really does shape the way you live. For example, I use internet banking because I believe that it's safe. Okay? And contrary to popular belief, I do not test electrical circuits by licking them because I believe it would be bad for my health. Extremely bad for my health. I don't eat too much ice cream because I also believe it would give me major brain freeze. So on and so forth. All things and examples of decisions that are shaped by what I believe. The fundamentals of what I believe and where they are founded. And there is no greater question than this one. And that is, who is Jesus? The creed answers this question. It's interesting to point out that there has never been a more influential name and subject of human history that's brought so much positive and so much negative talk than the name of Jesus. Literally, it's the name that's been heard around the world and has been the case for over 2,000 years. Did you know each month his name averages around 25 million hits on Google searches? 25 million searches a month on Google. Obviously, as with everything that we're doing in the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, it's all rooted in the Word of God, because I believe that this is the inspired Word of God. There is no other religious text in the world that comes close to the complexity, the simplicity, and how it is living and breathing in our lives every single day than the Word of God. So if you want to look to Mark chapter 14 to start with, it says, And the high priest, in verse 60, stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What is it that these men testify against you? So at this point, Jesus has been brought before the Sanhedrin. The people accusing him of all blasphemy. Okay? He'd been accused, arrested, and they said, you were blaspheming. And they went on to say, but he kept silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him, saying to him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed God? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do you have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be served of death. So, most question his existence, not realising that it's actually rooted in historical fact. Most considered Jesus just a mere human of no significance other than he was a great teacher like Gandhi or Teresa with some amazing philosophical values, a wonderful moral teaching. And to these same people, the idea that Jesus is God is just impossible. It's something we cannot comprehend, something we cannot get our head around. But the truth is this morning that the creed describes Jesus in three words. The first being the Christ. So the Christ means the anointed one. The one Jews would know one day would come as the Messiah to set God's people free. He didn't come in the way they expected him to come. But he came nevertheless humble and a servant of men. The other word they used to refer to him is Lord. See, this is the word that the Jews referred to as God in place of Yahweh. (laughs) Yahweh. Y-H-W-H. The name of God. So straight away in the creed, they're pointing to Jesus and going, you are God. You are more than just a man. You are God. 
And then the creed actually goes on and says, Jesus is God. So that's the answer. That's who Jesus is. Jesus is God. But what does the Bible say? What does the Bible back up? Because this is crucial to us. There are many denominations out there that will not teach that Jesus is God. There are many other people out there, philosophers, that will say Jesus was just a man. He didn't even historically exist. The fact is he existed. And the fact is the fundamental basis of Christianity is that if Jesus isn't God, we have no basis for Christianity. If Jesus isn't God, we have no basis for salvation, which means we're wasting our time here this morning. It's quite drastic, really, when you consider it. See, the Bible teaches that Jesus is not merely someone who is a lot like God or someone who has a very close walk with God. In fact, in Hebrews 1.3, it says that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory, the exact, not a portion, not a bit, not mostly, the exact representation of his being. In other words, if you want to know who God is, then Jesus is our example. Titus 2.13 says that as Christians, we are looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus. Thomas, in John 20, upon seeing the resurrected Christ, he cried out, My Lord and my God. What a wonderful, wonderful declaration that is. In fact, it was a declaration that would turn... The world upside down. It was his declaration that led the way for people to claim Jesus as God. Paul said in Colossians that by him all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. All things were created by him and for him. Again a reference to something that we would call an attribute of God. We've been looking at the attributes in our house group on Thursday. The reason we've been looking at the attributes is to answer the same question. Who is God? If I was to define God, how would I define him? And it would be these attributes. If you have these attributes, that makes you deity. And one of them is to be created. You see, Christ created all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created by him and for him. And he upholds his creation. What man can say they can do that? I could barely uphold the plaster on walls yesterday without it falling off. It was nuts, wasn't it? (laughs) But Christ holds all of creation and everything that exists outside of that. That includes eternity in the palm of his hand. It's mind-blowing. And I can't get my head around it, but that's the truth of God's word this morning. Isaiah knew this well. In the Old Testament, when in chapter 9 he prophesied that the Messiah would be called Mighty God. So we are saying that Christ is all powerful. Matthew 28 backs this up and he said, All power and authority is given in my name. There is no man that has that power and authority. Some might say the Pope has a lot of power and authority and he does have a lot of sway caused a lot of issue in the 14 and 1500s because of the power one man had. But Christ was more than just one man. Christ was God. Another quality or attribute of being God that we see in Christ, that makes him God, was being omnipresent. Omnipresent means for anyone who's in my house group, he's everywhere. You were in there that week as well. Well done, Mike. <laughs> Only present means he's everywhere. He's literally everywhere at once. Which means he could corporately be in the midst of believers, as he is now. He is here in the midst of us. But he's also personally present in every believer. Don't ask me to explain how. I ain't got the foggiest. <laughs> but, I mean, that's what his word says numerous times. Matthew 18, where two or three are gathered in my name, there he is with them. There are many gatherings around the world today happening at this moment in time where Christ is at the centre, personally present in every meeting. Us today, as we worship together, Christ is in the middle of what we are doing. Hopefully, as you are fed from the Word, He is in the centre of His Word this morning, being glorified, being exalted as we experience the awesome presence of Jesus. He's omniscient this morning. What does omniscient mean? 
Come on, house group. Test. He's all knowing. Close. Close. Gaz wasn't there, but well done for having a bash, mate. Good lad. <laughs> Omniscient means he knows all things. In John chapter 21, Jesus said to Peter, at this point, Jesus has been, he's been set up to be sent out again. He's been restored at this present time. He's abandoned Christ. He's forsaken him. He's denied him. And Christ says to him three times, do you love my sheep? But Peter's, I do. <laughs> Stop asking me. I do love you. I do love you. But Lord, you know all things, he says to him. You know all things, so you know I do. So why do you keep asking me? He says, go and feed my sheep. Because Christ knows all things. We know throughout his ministry, he was able to read the hearts of people around him. He was able to discern what was going on around him to the point that he would detour, he would move, he would speak because he knew all things. Hebrews 13 says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Gary gave that word this morning. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. That means he is eternal. He is eternal. He existed before time began. And he will exist after time finishes. Matthew 28, 20 says he will be with us always till the very end of the age. John 1, 1 says he was the word in the beginning. There is a lot of scriptures this morning. Because there's no point trying to tell you who God is without reading the word. <laughs> it's important. These are scriptures that we need to declare. Jehovah's Witnesses will not say that Christ is God. These are the scriptures that confirm he is. When people start worshipping Mary and praying to St. Paul. You're wasting your time. He's dead. He's in the grave. He's waiting for the same thing as we are. That rapture. <laughs> But Christ said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. These things all point to Christ being eternal. So why is this important that Jesus be God? And that there needs to be evidence for it. The Bible says that we are to come by faith. Faith is a gift of God. We need faith on a daily basis to walk this walk, to live this life. Who here has had a rough week? I think most have. Who had a rough week last week? I think most have had issues. About the week before. Yet still we are found here on a Sunday morning. Why? By faith in who Christ is. The fundamental of what he has done is what we need. The whole basis of salvation, the plan that God formed to save sinners... From an eternity out of his presence, all hinged on Jesus' death on the cross. This meant that Jesus needed to be sinless. So he needed to be more than just a man. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, the word says. And in Exodus and Leviticus, God instructed his people and says, Only a perfect, spotless sacrifice without blemish can truly atone for the sins of Israel. And there was one that would come who was truly perfect, who was truly spotless, who was without blemish, who was sinless. He became sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. In order for us, the unrighteous, to be able to come to God, it would take someone divinely righteous to take us to him. In the house group, we talked about two mountain tops. On one mountain, this side, was sinners. The sins of the world. Everything that we have ever done. We are on this mountain here. On this side was God. We were cut off from him because of our sin. Our unrighteousness. The things that we had done that had offended him. And we broke his law. Irrespective of its value. It didn't matter. If you stole something. You had broken his command. Even if it was a one pen sweet from the pick and mix store when you were a kid. You had broken his law. How are we going to get to God? It was through the cross of Christ. He bridged the gap. Like that. So we could come across into the presence of the King. Into the presence of our God. 
The wonderful thing is that in his divinity is God. He chose to live this life with human restrictions so he would know temptation. So he lived this life the way we hoped we could only live it. And in doing this, he remained pure. He remained holy. He remained blameless. And he remained set apart for sinners. Something else we talked about this week. To be set apart. To be taken out of one thing. And he was set apart for a mission. And that was to save his creation. Us. To make a way for his creation. His people. That we could be found in the presence of Christ. That we could be found in the presence of God once more. Please church, do not kid ourselves this morning. We have all broken that law. That leads us to this place of hopelessness. But Jesus is the one who leads us out into a truly vast valley of hope. Jesus did what no other could. Why? Because he was God. He did what only he could do. What only God was capable of doing. He said, you owed, I'll pay. His love for us is divine. There is no greater love than his love. A truly selfless, perfect love. And it's a love that is available for you and for me. Now today you may feel no value. You may feel a failure and a hopeless case. But this morning I want you to know. But because Christ is God. Because in his divinity and his humanity. He was able to die on that cross. To make a way for me and you. Then you can be assured this morning. You truly are forgiven. And he walks with you if you repent. And ask him into your life. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. That there is no hopeless cases in here. Only works in progress. In the question of is Jesus God. We can see the evidences that are found in scripture. All point to him being God. And the greatest claim to his divinity that will stand the test of time is the cross of Christ. That will always support his claim when he stood before them and he said, I am the son of man. I am the Christ. And you will see me sitting at the right hand of power. Finally, there were some wonderful I am statements to finish with. It will give us hope. It will give us comfort. It will give us what we need as we go from this place. I want you to go from here today. Understand that in that creed, we're not just merely saying Jesus is God. We're saying Jesus is God because of what he said. Because of what he did. Because of the evidences that support him. Because the word of God backs it up. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the good shepherd. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. He said, I am the first and the last. He said, I am the living one. He said, I am the alpha and omega. He said, I am the beginning and the end. And he says this morning, I am your salvation. He says, I am your God. If we can trust he is God and trust he is who he says he is. There is no reason to stop trusting him later on when things get tough. This is the point of the creed. I said this last week and I'll say it again. The point of this creed is to remind us who we worship. To remind us who he is. The truth of his character. That when things get tough, I'm not just going to recite some old phrase. I'm going to recite truth. Established biblical truth. That when times get tough, I can stand on that truth. My King, my God, He is for me, not against me. Some might argue that Jesus didn't claim to be God, but the historical truth is He did. Otherwise, why was He crucified in the first place? He claimed to be God. Blasphemy was the claim against Him. So we've simply this morning looked at the claims to who Jesus was. The evidence that supports it biblically. Now we could go into many, many more evidences that support him. External evidences. The fact that the church grew like wildfire in the early days. That all the massive nations and kingdoms like Turkey. The province of Turkey was huge. And they noticed something was changing. It was in letters written. 
I said, something in this, because these people weren't willing to die before. But now, these disciples of the way are willing to die for what they believe. It had been noted and noticed. The question I have for you is, does this change how you see him this morning? And does this change how you live each and every day? Today we've been declaring through worship who Jesus is. Miracle maker, way maker, promise keeper, faithful one, healer, anchor. We've declared this morning through the word that he is the bread of life, the light of the world, the good shepherd, the resurrection, the way, the truth and the lies. Life, first and last, the living one, the alpha and the omega, all supported and held up by the cross of Christ. If you believe that this morning, and you have that relationship with him, then I encourage you this morning to press on. The wonderful thing is that when Jesus rose again, he rose with a promise. And that promise was he would be with you till the very end of the age. I want you to hold on to that promise, promise not to give in, not to back down. But remember, we're not just saying Jesus is God. We're saying you're the maker of all things. We're saying you are our creator. You are a sustainer. You are the one that provides. You are the God of the Old Testament and the New Testament. That you have always existed and you will continue to always exist. That you are bigger than the circumstances. That you are bigger than my problems. You are bigger than my hang-ups, my worries, my doubts and my fears. There is nothing that you cannot do and nothing you cannot overcome this morning. So I will look to you, my Lord, my God, and my King. Amen. That's it because I deleted the other bit of it. (laughs) Sorry, chaps. But next time I'm up continuing with this series of the Creed, I'll be looking at his humanity. We've looked at his divinity this morning. And it's wonderful to know that Christ somehow (laughs) was able to exist on this plane, on this earth, for 33 years fully human and fully God and we will look into that next time these are big studies these are massive subjects but they are the ABCs of our faith the fundamentals of what we believe I need refreshing in it so I hope you guys do as well so we're going to hand back to Chris while we set up Amen